In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform the ANOVA two-factor without replication. This tests for differences between the means of two or more independent groups or measures. And in this case, what we have is we have groups of individuals that have membership in two different groups or two different independent variables. So we have people that live in two different places possibly. They either live in an urban environment or a rural environment. And then we also separate them out by their physical activity level, whether or not they have no regular physical activity or they perform consistent physical activity. And then our outcome is a stress scale from 0 to 10, in which they have 0 stress or stress on a scale of 10, which indicates severe stress. So what we're attempting to discover is what influence physical activity might have by itself on stress level in, in two different levels. And then also where a person lives, there are residents, either urban or rural, and what effect, and what effect that may have on their stress level. So we're looking at two different independent variables here, physical activity level and residence. And we're looking to see the effect that each has by itself on the level of stress. Now, fortunately, Excel does not allow us to determine if there's an interaction effect between these two variables. In other words, is there a unique interaction or a unique combination of these two factors that might affect stress level, but it at least allows us to look at multiple variables simultaneously. So in order to perform this data analysis, we're going to go to the Data tab and then pick the Data Analysis Tool Pack. And then we're going to find ANOVA two-factor without replication. So in other words, these are independent groups of individuals. They're not being measured more than once. They're just being measured once. So there is no replication or there is no repeated measures. So we choose that and then we click OK. And we want to input our range of data. So we're going to click on the button here and we're going to highlight the labels for our columns and our rows. So I'm not going to highlight uh, these labels. Those are more for, for my own purposes. I'm going to highlight the row and column labels and then click the Ref Edit button. And I want to indicate that I want to include the label so we can keep track of everything. I then need to decide on the alpha level, which I want to test my null hypothesis. In this case, we're going to use the 0.05 level to test the null hypothesis. And then I also want to indicate where I want my output range to be placed. So I'm going to click here, ref edit, and then we're going to put our tables uh, right over here. Okay, and once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and click OK. So here we have our output, and the first table we're going to see is a summary table um, that attempts to give us an idea of the mean for each of the levels of each of the groups. So what we can first look at is the mean stress level for the urban group and the rural group, regardless of how much physical activity they have. And we can see here that their mean stress level is 5.9 and 5.8 for urban and rural, respectively. Now, one thing this table does not do for us very efficiently is break out the averages for people that have no physical activity and consistent physical activity, regardless of where they live. So what I did was created these two columns over here to the right uh, where I basically copied and pasted the scores for the groups of people that were in the no activity group and the consistent activity group and then created um, using the average function created average scores for each of those two groups regardless of where they live. So as we can see the group that has, a, has no physical activity has an average stress level of 7.3 and those that have consistent physical activity have an average stress level of 4.4. So our next task is then to see if these factors had a significant effect on the stress level. So first we'll go down to the ANOVA table here. So first let's look at the uh, rows. Okay, and this refers to the effect of physical activity level because that was what was placed on the rows. Um, and so this is the effect of no or consistent physical activity on stress regardless of where the individuals live. As we can see here, the F score is 2.63 and the p-value associated with that F score is 0.02 or less than 0.05. So we'd be able to make the conclusion that 
level of physical activity, regardless of where you live, has a significant effect on stress level. And again, we can see that between our two groups here. 7.3 is quite a bit different than 4.4. So there's a significant effect of physical activity level on stress. Now we can look at the columns, which is where, the, uh, where they live, their residents, urban or rural. So we find columns, follow that across, and the F score is quite small, 0.03, and that's associated with a p-value obviously greater than 0.05. So it appears that where you live does not have a significant effect on your stress level. So there's no significant difference between these two groups of urban and rural. So the conclusions we'd be able to make then would be that physical activity level by itself has a significant effect on stress level in this group of individuals. But residents, area of residence, urban versus rural, does not have a significant effect on stress level as exhibited by these two means. Now, as I mentioned, Excel does not do an interaction function for us, so we don't know if there's some unique combination of living in an urban and rural environment and having a certain level of physical activity. So there is that kind of limitation to this analysis. So to summarize, what we've been able to do is look at the effect of two different independent variables on a single numeric outcome, in this case stress level, and we've been able to make conclusions about the effect that each of those variables has on the outcome individually. So we're able to study the effect of multiple variables simultaneously. So hopefully you found this video informative, and good luck using this technique in your own research.